Hey guys, Frank Pimentel here, your local realtor. I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. Recently, I had a chance to sit down with Mark Akjar, one of my top home inspectors and owner of Mark's Inspections. We were discussing certain things that homeowners can do from home while quarantined still to keep up with the maintenance on their home and possibly certain things that may come up in an inspection report if you were interested in listing your home at some point in the future. Take a look. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Good to see you. Hey, Frank, how's it going, man? Good to, be, good to be here. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. But again, good to see you. Thanks for joining me today. Since everybody's home now, I'm sure there are probably some things as a home inspector that you can suggest that people can do while they're home uh, for safety issues or, you know, just maintenance issues. Does, you know, does anything come to mind that, that you can think of? Yeah, that's, that's actually a great question, and there definitely are. Um, I'd say the first thing that probably comes to my mind are uh, carbon oxide and smoke detectors. You know, making sure that people have carbon oxide and smoke detectors in their home to begin with. Yeah. Uh, you know. Just remind, can you remind me and everyone where carbon monoxide and smoke should be placed in the homes? Yeah, so it's supposed to be one carbon monoxide detector per level. So one, one per level of every layer of the house, including the basement, uh, and then one smoke detector per sleeping area, um, usually entered inside, you know, inside the bedrooms. So for the people who do have them in the right places, as far as testing to make sure that they work, all they have to do is just press the button and as long as it beeps, it's fine. Yeah, press the button. You know, if you haven't changed them, some of the newer ones are actually pretty cool. They have like five year plus batteries. If you have some of the older ones and they're all like yellowed up and they turned yellow inside the house, those probably are garbage by now. Uh, what are a couple other things that you can think of? Uh, you know, I, I, I think one of the great things that a lot of people neglect to do in their house um, is, is, you know, cleaning out dishwashers are great. There's like a little, a little drain screen at the bottom of dishwashers that you can remove to clean out all the sediment out of the bottom. Um, I'm sure there's some great YouTube videos on your particular type of dishwasher that you have and how to clean them out. Um, okay. yeah, those, those are great. That's a great thing to do. It'll help make your dishes stay cleaner. Uh, you have like less reduced like spots and grime on it. And yeah. It'll, smell better too. And how often do you think that that should be done? It, you know, probably once every, every couple of months, if you could, uh, I'm pretty OCD. So I do it every, every couple of months myself, but some people like, never have done it ever. Um, some people do it once a year, you know, depending how much, some people pre rinse, like, you know, you get like my mom and she'll be, she'll wash all the dishes before they go in the dishwasher. You know, they're already clean by the time they go in. So somebody like her, they probably can get away with once a year. Uh, another thing too, oh, this is great. Um, was, uh, uh, kitchen exhaust, you know, cleaning out your, your kitchen exhaust, even if you just have a recirc kitchen exhaust, one that recirculates the exhaust back into the house, there's little screens at the bottom there. If you can degrease those or clean them out or replace them if they're replaceable, that's huge. Uh, even if you have one that does vent outside, you know, just as important. So Mark, yeah. how can people clean out their kitchen exhaust? Is it, yeah. is it a something simple that they can do on their own? Yeah, usually, um, you know, the, the microwaves have two, two or one little screen at the bottom that you can just slide out and then degrease and clean off, or some people throw them through the dishwasher to degrease them and clean them off. That, that's great. Um, if you have a, just one that's an individual vent, sometimes there's just one screen at, the, screen at the top that you can clean out at the top of the kitchen exhaust vent. Um, or if you have one of the more complicated ones, sometimes you have to take them apart and take apart the louvers and, and thoroughly clean them out and then spray inside. If you have an exhaust that goes outside, you got to sometimes reach your hand there and, and clean it out. But it's super important that you get that done. You know, it's one of the, I think it's like the third or fourth cause of household fires. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a great one. That's a great one. And if anybody has any questions, I'll put your information at the end of this video. Uh, anything else you can think of? Um, you know, as if it ever starts to get warmer again, you know, <laughs> it's the, uh, when people start to turn on their, uh, their ACs, um, changing their filters inside their, uh, their ACs are, are huge. You know, how many times have we done an inspection and, and those things are all just caked up full of grime and dust from decades full of stuff on the inside. Yeah. And you know, of course, it's a little tough to get somebody there to clean out the ducts inside the homes, which not nine, 10 people never do. But for now, just cleaning out that, spending, people are spending a lot of time at home. So indoor air quality is huge, you know, replacing it with a good filter. You don't want to get sometimes get one that's too thick. Um, but one that, you know, that properly filters out all the dust out of the air is great. So if you have like one of those, like those cheap blue filters that you can see through, throw that one in the garbage, get one that's like a white pleated 3M filter if you can. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And one last thing you can come up with. Ah, oh, geez. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm super OCD myself. So I find myself going around the house and, you know, cleaning windows and tops of door sills and, you know, changing filters and my, and my sediment filters in my house and all those little honeydew list things that I've been, you know, putting off forever that I'm like, oh, I'll get to that later. And now I'm like, no, no, I don't have an excuse. So, you know, now yeah. I have to. So everything that we've shared is actually 
good information for someone who may be considering listing their home either now or once this passes. These could be things that'll come up in an inspection report anyway if they're not taken care of. So why not take care of them now so that they don't come up in a buyer's inspection report? Is that the right way to look at it? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. You know, you, you know, like when, when you and I go through, sometimes people be like, "Oh no, the house is mint," and then you and I go through, and you're like, "No, no." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And these are usually issues, and especially you know, carbon dioxide and smoke texture. That's that's something that's required for them to do. But yeah, definitely to, to prep to prep the house for sale. That would be a huge thing, you know, and just general safety alone. It just makes your house look nicer, you know, and, and makes it look like you take care of your place. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, Mark. That's that was all great information. Thanks again for joining me. Stay safe. Uh, well wishes to you and your family and I hope to see you again soon uh, in person. Thanks Frank and thanks very much for having me and be safe and hope everybody is well. You got it. Thanks Mark. Thanks Frank. Take care. If you found this information useful, feel free to share it with your friends and family. Stay safe, stay healthy and we'll see you soon. Thank you.